Hi, in this video, the second in the series about code breaking, we'll take a quick look at my code breaking program in action before getting down to learning some of the coding techniques that you need to solve the task in the next few videos. Firstly, you can use um, Windows Notepad to create your message in the first place. Um, so for example here, I'm just using the, the Notepad screen, uh, you just literally open that up and you type in anything you want. Um, make it a nice long message because the more text you've got there, the more chances you've got of analysing it correctly when you come to your standard English because there's a more a reliable piece of analysis to do on the uh, letter frequencies there. Um, so I'm just going to uh, say uh, this is the end of the message. Um, and then you just do file and save. And when you do save it, make sure you save it in the same folder as all of your EP code breaking stuff. I've got this on my uh, F drive and yours may be on a different drive, but I would set up a special folder where you're going to put all of your programmings, uh, all of your programs and all of your um, message text as well. OK, so first let's look at my encoder program. And in fact, although I've just demonstrated how to use um, Notepad, I didn't use Notepad to uh, to create my message. I've actually written a program which is going to take what the user types in. So I can type in, um, uh, hello there. Oops. I've accidentally put an E on the end of hello. And uh, so I've actually coded it so that it can go back and delete characters as well. And I can put in new line characters. This here, you can see a little sort of new line character. So is it it throws a new line on the page and then we'll start typing on the next line. So this is the next line of my message. Oops. Okay, and this is the end of the message. And then I just have to hit the escape key and it will save that message. So it's just got a little bit of a um, a bit of text coming out here. Splendid, what a lovely, me lovely message it is to enter how many places to shift your character. So I'm going to shift it seven places and then hit enter. And we can see that I've just printed out how it's translated by message for me after its seven place shift. So if I look back in the folder now, it's created this file here called coded.txt, <coughs> which I'll have a take a look at here. It's got my message um, in this funny, bizarre format. Um, all been shifted there. Right, so now I'm running the analysis program and just a, a short little essay here to the user. I think I might have just about overdone it here, which explains what's going to happen in the program and a little bit about the processing of the correlation coefficient analysis. So I'll just hit enter. And first of all, we've got our two lists here of uh, the standard letter frequencies in order here, E being the most popular, T being the second most popular, and so on. And um, we've got the, for my message, L is the most popular, Z is the second most popular. Interesting that A and O are the third and fourth most popular in both standard English and in my message, which is slightly confusing. Um, but essentially, if L represents E's, we've got E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, that would represent a shift of um, seven places. Which actually is right, because we remember doing the message just a minute ago. So, um, so this, you know, it's a useful technique. So let's move on. Um, and if we look at the bar chart that I've produced, I can see that S um, represents my standard English. So this is a bar chart. All the S's are the bars for my standard English uh, message. Um, we can see that he's uh, the most popular highest bar there on the chart. And in my message, that's the asterisks, um, L is the most popular me uh, letter there. 22 L's uh, in my message, uh, uh, tw or 22% of the letters in my message are L, and um, only 1% of them were E's. So by doing that straight comparison here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, again, it looks like we've got a shift of seven places. So let's move along. And in fact, here we can see when I do my correlation, 7 has a correlation of nearly 0 0.8. That's nearly 1. Um, so that's the most likely shift. If the 7 didn't work, as you see, that you know my message may not be quite in the same proportion. Or the letters might not be quite in the same proportions in my message as they are in proper English. Um, we would then go on and try a shift of 11 places. And then a shift of no places, which 
doesn't seem very likely given what the message looked like and so on and so on so we've got a list of possible uh, shifts to do there so here we are running my decoding program um, a few little notes to the user here it's expecting a file called coded.txt and uh, we we know we've got that and it's going to write a message to decoded.txt it does tell us that if that a file called decoded.txt already exists then it's going to overwrite it so we've got to be a little bit careful here um, so let's just move on to the next stage here uh, please type in the number of places you want to shift. Well, I shifted it seven originally, so I now need to shift it minus seven places. Hit enter. The message it took in was this bizarre looking thing up here, and it's translated that to hello there everyone, which is in fact the message that I, I put in. Um, there we go. Likewise here, it's translated correctly. It all looks like it's translated correctly, so I can see that on screen. In addition, my program has written it to this file called decoded.txt, um, but you don't actually have to do that as long as you can understand and decode the messages. So let's just take a final look at that decoded.txt. If I double click to run that in Notepad, hello there everyone, this is the next line of my message, this is the end of my message. Okay, so it's decoded the message for us into that file there. So I've now got um, coded.txt and I've got decoded.txt.